Hey folks, Pastor Josh here. We have been going through the book of James chapter 2 quite a while here, quite a bit. And we are looking at, uh, we, we've gone through in the last video, we went down to verse 25 in the chapter. But I want to go back up. I want to really divulge a little bit more onto this Abraham and Isaac uh, situation and go through a little bit more deeper than we did in the last video. So, if you have a Bible handy, I'm doing modern English version here, and we're going to discuss a little bit more about the the faith Abraham had and why he had such faith that he did. So we're going to we're going to talk about that. If you watched the last video, you know that um, some of this where this is going to go. But I, I I want to go back and I want to kind of kind of, it, it's for a setting up of verse 20, verses 25 and 26 in the, the chapter, because we, we're talking about the faith of those in the Old Testament. Okay? So, and the, and the, and how that faith brought about their works. So, verse 21 in James chapter 2 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? Do you see how faith worked with his work, how faith worked with his works and by works faith was made perfect the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was reckoned unto him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God you see then how by works a man is justified and not only by faith now understand that it says here in verse 20 uh, one was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar God believed or Abraham believed God in that God would save his son and it says that he believed that if God God caused him to slay his son with a knife God would raise him from the dead because Isaac was the promised son that God gave him Sarah so he believed that so because he believed that by faith he was he was ready and he was willing by work by the work of doing so to sacrifice his son. So his faith brought about the work of acting on what God had called him to do. Now, do you see how faith worked with his works and how by works faith was made perfect? He was exercising his faith. He was he wasn't just saying, I believe and I'm just gonna sit here. That's not a perfected faith. That's not a perfected faith. That is a faith that over time will die. Abraham perfected his faith by doing in which God had called him to do. Abraham effect, uh, exercised his faith and in doing so he perfected his faith. Now, that's a call for us today. Understand that all of this is a call for us today. What has God called you to do? What has God called me to do? What is God saying to us through this? And this is only something that we can understand, we can know ourselves. God desires for us to know Him in a real way. And if we have the faith to accept Him as Lord and Savior, the very first thing that we should do that would bring about building our faith is the work of taking time to spend with Him in this. Taking the time to ask God to show us himself through his word. To guide us and direct us through his word. That is the very first thing we should be doing to bring about the faith in which God has planted in our heart by, by, giving, by allowing us to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He says, do you not know that faith worked with his works and by works faith made, was made perfect? What are we doing to perfect our faith? What are we doing to grow our faith? What are we doing to, to help our faith to be greater for the furtherance of the kingdom, for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ? What are we doing? What are you and I doing? What are we doing to perfect that? That, that is a very good question. That is something that we have to reckon to ourselves. What am I doing? To help the word of God go forth in the world. What am I doing to help the word of God go forth in my community, in my county, in my state, 
and also in the in the in the world. What am I doing? What what it, what works as my faith bringing about? We have to ask. I have to ask myself that question. We have to ask ourselves that question. What is it doing for us? What are the works that God is calling us to do? So understand that we must perfect our faith by the works in which is brought forth by the faith that we possess. We must perfect our faith. We must grow our faith. We must strengthen our faith. Now, the scripture was fulfilled by it, which says, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. He believed. He didn't have the indwelling of the Spirit. He didn't have the cleansing blood of Jesus. He had a sacrificial covering. But because he believed, he was made righteous before God. And that belief and that faith brought about the works of God. Now, my works was going nuts back there. But now, understand that the works are what causes are brought up or actually are brought about the works don't cause the faith I almost said that but the I was what I was thinking was faith causes the works and that's where we're at here in this the faith of the faith that God has given us to believe in the belief in Jesus that faith as it grows brings about the works of God brings about the works of God in our life and we should want that we should desire that it says here that because of what his because of his faith and his belief Abraham was called a friend of God do you know and we've talked about this in videos but do you know that God sees us prior to salvation prior to believing in Jesus God sees us as hostile to God and an enemy but God's desire for us is to be friendly with him our God God's desire is for us to have a friendship to have a sonship, to be a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And how you get there is by going and asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Abraham was a friend because he believed what God was telling him to do. He believed in God. He had a heart belief in God, and that was his righteousness, and that's our righteousness, a heart belief in God. Now, Verse 24, you see then how by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Not by faith alone, and as he says. Because the faith should bring about the works. Works to strengthen your faith. Works to strengthen your faith. That is what God would want us to do and understand through this. Now, we're going to go and finish the chapter out today. We've got time to finish the chapter out. All of this setting up for verse 25. Likewise was not Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them all out another way. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Rahab had to believe that the messengers were sent by God. She had to believe that in order for them to to send for her to send them out another way she had to believe that if she didn't believe that then she would have said here they are here they are take them okay but she believed God and she believed that the messengers were sent by God so that faith brought about the works of sending them out another way okay so understand that that is what this is about and and it says here that as the body without the spirit is dead, if we, if we don't have a life force and a soul in our body, we are dead. You understand that? We are dead. If we don't have a spirit and a soul, we're dead. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Because it is the spirit in us that causes us to go forth. To proclaim God. It's the spirit in us that causes us to live our life and continue living life in a natural sense. If we didn't have a spirit, we wouldn't do anything. We're dead. 
we have faith without the works, the faith is dead. The faith is dead. So understand that. And, and that is a question that we have to ask ourselves. We have to really do some soul searching. We have to really think about our life, our understanding of the scripture, our desire for God. What is our motivation for doing what we do? Is it our faith or is it our own thinking? And then when it comes to our faith, what do we do work-wise because of the leading of our faith and the leading of God? What do we do? What do you do? What do I do? What do I do? I want to tell you that doing these videos for me is very important because it, 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 it grows my faith. It grows my faith. It helps me to grow. And, and, and I pray that it helps you to grow as well and ministers to you in a real way. But these videos do that for me. Reading God, reading the Bible, reading the Word of God and getting into it and understanding it really does wonders as well. We need to do that as believers. We need to do that as people. We need to get into God's Word. Don't allow your feelings and your emotions and everything else dictate your relationship with God. Don't let it dictate your faith. The Bible, Spirit of God, should be dictating your faith. should be dictating the works you do because of your faith. Understand that. God desires for you and I to love Him. And doing so and growing your faith starts with this. Starts with this. Get in it and read it. Understand it. Want to know it. De desire to know it. So that God can, can begin to do a work in you. So God can, can begin to do a work in you that you would be fully transformed in Him. Faith and works working together. Strengthening you. Growing you. Allowing God to do good things through you. And with you. Okay? Now, we are going to probably end this video a little bit early, but that is what I want you to think about, and I want you to divulge in your spirit, and to pray, and to understand that God desires for you to be a little bit better every single day than you were the previous one. And how that happens is by spending the time growing in your faith by the works that God is calling you to do. By the works in which God is calling you to do. You need to do that. You need to understand that God desires for you to be better than you are right now. And the only way that's going to happen is by taking the faith in which is which which you possess in Jesus Christ and exercising it by the works in which God has called you to do. It's the only way it's going to happen. The only way it's going to happen. So understand that that is what God is calling you to do. That is what God's calling you to do. So next time on the video, we'll be starting chapter 3. This is the end of chapter 2. We'll be starting chapter 3, and we are going to probably be embarking on one of my favorite portions of Scripture, and it's about taming the tongue and how we speak and what we speak and how we do it. We're going to be talking about this. So if you want to read ahead in verse, read chapter 3 ahead, we're going to, we're, we are going to be in, in, embarking on that in the next video. So, but that is my challenge for you. Do some soul search and see where you are in God. See if you need to do some things. See if God wants to do some things through you. And the important thing, if he wants to do things through you and things need to change in your life, allow him to change them. Allow him to do what he needs to do to change you. And then apply those things and be better tomorrow than you were today. And then be better the next day than you were the day prior to that. So until next time, this is Pastor Josh. God bless.